Yeah, we don't know what just happened with that, but we're going to get started. What's going on? What's going on? Susceptible 
What's going on, people? Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Like I say, we build it as we fly it. So, damn it. Technical difficulties and all. We roll, baby. We roll. We roll. We roll. This is why you got to be ready while you're ready. All right. Tonight, we got a big show. Let's get right on into it. Uh, moderators, be on the lookout because we're going to have a lot of people coming in tonight. Because when you have somebody like Alpha Male Strategies... He draws a big crowd. He draws a big crowd. So, uh, yeah, man. How we doing this evening? How we doing tonight? What do you mean pick up your phone? What are you talking about? Do, 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 do. AMS was blocked? All right, let's see. Check your phone. All right. I don't see anything from the brother, but let's see. MS. He's trying to call. Send it to your email. There we go. You should be able to get on. Uh, 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 uh. All right. Sent to your email. There we go. That's camera two. This is camera one. <clears throat> I'm going to play some music while we're getting this ready to go. Here we 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 go. How's everybody doing tonight? Hope we're good. Hope we're ready. AMS, uh, show your uh, calendar. Your all uh, right. There you go. Make sure your microphone's not off. But uh, I ask you to unmute. And I'm a. Uh, Can you hear me, brother? I got you now. I got you now. Oh. Let's get into this. I'm about to bring you on, on main camera. Uh, let me know when you're ready to be on, on screen. Hold on. Let me turn the speaker on. Okay. So, guys, welcome back to uh, another episode of what's fast becoming a, a destination kind of webcast. Don't have a name for the show, but right now, we, but today, we're just going to call this one The Show. You guys have been asking for it for a long time. Hey, man, 
when are you when are you and Alpha Male Strategies going to do another show? Uh, and I have heard you, and now our calendars have aligned. We are ready to go, man, because, man, we are trying to give you guys some of the best in actionable information, real-world content that you guys can use. Uh, I don't need to introduce this man. He is a he he came to YouTube and blew up. Blew up, blew up, set the stage, set the bar high for new guys coming into it. And I like that shit. Are you ready to go? Ready, bro. Okay. Uh set the bar high for for people coming into the game. And I dig that. So we have none other than the one, the only AMS. How you doing, brother? You're on screen now. How you doing, bro? I'm good, man. I'm good. Just maintaining. Right, right, right. Um, now, you got a lot of stuff going on, um, obviously. But you know, mm -hmm. the tack I wanted to take tonight with you mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. one that I think you, you more than anybody else that everybody has witnessed here on YouTube, can identify mm -hmm. with and then kind of mm -hmm. lines up with what I'm talking about. How having right. a high value mindset mm -hmm. and created and you created your own life. Now, if I, if I recall correctly, uh, not a few years ago, how long ago were you in Birmingham? Uh, that was over 10 years ago. Okay. So, and you moved uh, to New York City and you moved mm -hmm. to Brooklyn, right? But there was yeah. a point in time where you were in New York City about you were doing some sort of bouncing security work mm -hmm. and you just had an epiphany of deciding to deci make yourself the best version of you. Well, I, actually, Kevin, go ahead. What happened was I'm not echoing, am I? No, no, no. You're good. OK. What actually happened, Kevin, was one night I met the security club. <clears throat> And uh, I'm doing security, and this guy from out of town, from France, he was like, damn, dude, you're a big guy. He's like, how you get so big? And I just started telling him everything I do as far as eating and working out and all that type of stuff. And uh, at the end of it, he said something that kind of pissed me off, but it changed my life. Okay. He said, you should spend more time doing that then the security job. Okay. And at, the, at at that very moment, I wanted to choke the hell out of that motherfucker. I'm not going to lie <laughs> Why? I wanted to choke the hell out of him. I took it as an insult. Right. As but we often do. Throughout, throughout that night, I got to thinking about it. And I said, why don't I use all this knowledge I got in personal training to make some money off of it? And that when the epiphany, when the epiphany that, that very okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. That very that very next day, I woke up and I looked and uh, researched what I needed to do to become a personal trainer. And to my surprise, all I needed to do was get a uh, certification and go out and get a job. So right. I want that guy who I wanted to choke. He changed my life, actually, without him even knowing it. Well, damn. Well, now see, they say you can't see you. Let me see if I can change the camera. All right, there you maybe go. It's, maybe it's me. There you go. There you go. So when I when I first heard about saw you, hey, um, hey Kevin, go ahead, hey Kevin. If I saw somebody that looked like me, I want to see the video on too. Oh, hey, <laughs> That's right. Hey guys, hey guys, I don't want to deprive y'all. I'll make sure y'all get a good look at my face. I, I don't want to deprive y'all. There you see, see, when I when I first saw you come along, man, um, your 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 title, what I what I first noticed about you was the way you can you came into YouTube and what I considered the the YouTube way. You had a mm -hmm. a, 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 a uh, a name that was along the lines of what people will be searching for alpha male right. strategies you had right. your logo you mm -hmm. everything that i went to youtube university for everything and you came well, along and go here 
What the reason I did was because you got to understand that I had a business with my personal training and my security company. And so I learned then that to be a business, you need to have a logo and you need mm-hmm. to have a catchy business name. Mm-hmm. And so that that's why when I came to YouTube, I already had a guy that do logos and all that stuff already because he did the, the same guy was the same guy that did the logos for my security business and my personal training business. Right. So I knew so when you, you had to have something to make you stand out as far as a business. I knew that day one. Well, see, a lot of the things that you knew, see, one of the things I want to stress to everybody is I think one of the major reasons that you have the success you had is because you approach this as a business. Mm -hmm. You already had a busy life and you didn't need no more bullshit. You said, I'm going to do this Mm -hmm. as a business. Logo, strategy, Mm -hmm. branding, quick videos. You studied the algorithm. You knew what it took and you did and you, and you went the, I remember you went on solo show and you kind of did your Mm -hmm. rounds in the manosphere and Mm -hmm. in the same manosphere stuff that went on Mm -hmm. back then started to happen. The uh, Mm -hmm. back and forth, uh, beef as they would call it mm-hmm. but see what yeah. what you did was something that i have been stressing the longest you avoided the beef mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you just stopped and kept your head down and said i got a plan and i'm going to work it and we look up later mm-hmm. and a year later and the brother's a millionaire mm-hmm. that's what i'm talking about a high value mindset you came from birmingham mm-hmm. i'm from oklahoma city i, I mean <laughs> Oh, Alabama, Oklahoma, some of the poorest states in the union. Mm-hmm, you are a bouncer mm-hmm. and a security guard, and now you're an international brand. People mm-hmm. are one of the hottest things out there. That's what I want people to understand, mm-hmm. that high value, it had to start with your mindset first, and then you kind of had to make that happen. Um, now, you credit the guy who pissed you off, but it typically takes somebody pissing us off to get us started. Um, mm-hmm. tell, tell, and I'm going to tell you something else that pissed me Wait. off, too, Kevin. Go ahead. Let me, I'm going to tell you something else that pissed me off too, Kevin. Before that, Kevin, you must understand that I had been going to the manager asking him for a raise for like a year. Uh. And I hadn't been there for a few years. I've been there like three years. And uh, I hadn't had one raise. And to that night that guy was asking me, I had been on that guy. I had been on the manager ass by giving me a raise for like a year. And, he, and then I said to myself, I said, you know what? I said it ain't his it ain't his job to get me a raise. I said it's my job to get me a raise. There you go. See, one of the things I, I when I started watching cuz I studied this stuff. But I when I watched you, I saw a man that was doing the work and relying solely upon himself. Yeah, you came mm-hmm. in and uh were willing to go to the the way of doing all other stuff. But one of the things mm-hmm. that stuck out most to me is you avoided, you said, I'm going to avoid the beef. I'm going to keep my head down. I'm going to do what I do. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to control mm-hmm. my power. Let me, let me tell the crowd mm-hmm. what I mean by that. When you mm-hmm. catch fire or you, something happens, everybody want to deal mm-hmm. with, do business with you. Everybody want to be, get, mm-hmm. get with you. And mm-hmm. black men in particular need to resist feeling guilty, telling people no, mm-hmm. when you got something uh, mm-hmm. to protect. When you're a high value mm-hmm. man, it, it's, it takes work. You took work to get here. Mm-hmm. Talk to the guys about right. the high value mindset and then being having the balls and the guts to tell people, hell no, I'm not going to work with you. I'm going to keep it to myself. The, and then when I decide to do it, I'm going to do it on my terms for my business reasons. Well, the first thing guys going to have to understand is that when you start having success, you're going to attract haters. This, mm-hmm. this live stream right now, I guarantee you some of my biggest haters are watching this live stream. They watch every fucking move you do. You breathe, they watching. You take a shit, they watching. You eat, <laughs> they watching. They everything you do, they there to they there to look and see what's going on. So I hope you guys understand that with success, it gonna come haters, and they are like that. They like the devil that's trying to take you off sidetrack of what you're doing because mm-hmm. they don't want to see you with it. So if I'm not getting no well, well let me just bring you down with me. That little crab in a barrel mentality that a lot of, I, I guess I, I can say men in general, I don't even want to just say black men, men in general just got right. this little crab in the barrel mentality. And the thing about this here, as far as you having people that want to work with you, make sure that they're bringing value to you also. 
because you got to understand that people are usual. You know, guys sit around, Kevin, and all they talk about is female nature, female nature, female nature. Mm -hmm. But they never talk about human nature. And you never talk about male nature. And jealousy and envy and all that breeds from men and their competitiveness. Right. And they ain't your friend. You'll turn around and you'll work with a dude. The next week, you'll be making a video talking about your ass. I, see? And so you just need to understand that that this is a business and treat it as a business. Now, y'all guys know I don't work with, uh, I work with anybody, but I only work with guys that I see trying to help themselves. Mm-hmm. See? And then I'll work with them. See, when we did our interview, uh, uh, two years ago, that was when all that hating of AMS was starting. Mm-hmm. And uh, when you said, "Hey, man, I'm falling back. I'm not collabing with nobody," this and that, I mm-hmm. was like, "That's what." You, what did and what did I say? All right, bro. Here, you, when you ready to go again, let me know. I, I mean, because that's I, a good point. Let me jump on that, Kevin. That right there, what you just said was something I wanted to talk about. So. At that point, with me doing that, I'm actually letting the haters inhibit my business. Mm-hmm. So me going into a shell and not wanting to collab with people and we can help each other because people are hating, I'm actually letting the haters win. Right. And then it got to a point where recently, like the last, I say month, I said, man, fuck the haters. I said, you letting them win. You don't even want to collab with nobody, so you ain't even growing your brand the way you probably could. In that, in that essence, you letting the haters win. Okay. And that's and that's why I I, I just it it take it if uh, being successful and dealing with jealousy and stuff like that, it takes a while to develop mm-hmm. your skin. Like right now, somebody say something about me right now, Kevin. I laugh at them, but it took right. me a while to get to that point. That ain't See, that ain't a point you can just get to overnight it takes time to develop that thick skin to where you can ignore all that one of the guys that's the biggest his name is jeremy fragrance he's got over a million subscribers in a in a Mm -hmm. cologne reviewers you don't get over a hundred thousand subscribers and usually take people about 10 years to do it he got over a million Mm -hmm. he's a german model he got like Mm -hmm. four percent body fat he's he's on yachts and stuff with with uh uh models from around the world he's living the jet set life and one of the best mm-hmm. things he did was he blocked he just focused exactly he went into a uh that shell we were talking about but mm-hmm. he was able to do it in such a way that it it gave him time to focus while you were in that mm-hmm. shell you you wrote three books mm-hmm. three books your platform has uh increased massively um uh, mm-hmm. you you are you are a self-made man to now mm-hmm. you can do you can decide to come back out and after seeing that stuff and see what i want people to understand is guys we're mm-hmm. doing all this in front of you most businesses you don't see all this the messy details that mm-hmm. means you can do it too if you decide you mm-hmm. want to so i'm glad you mentioned mm-hmm. that the, uh not collaborating and stuff was kind of mm-hmm. the haters holding you back or restricting the business mm-hmm. Because one of the best, mm-hmm. one of the things that impressed me a lot is when, when mm-hmm. Stefan Klingscales hit. Because mm-hmm. he had been on YouTube for a while in the fitness sector, which is extremely mm-hmm. competitive. And mm-hmm. then he caught fire with his, mm-hmm. his very, I mean, he's a very talented young man and, and his, mm-hmm. his, his way of going. And you came through and you gave him a $100 donation. And that was pure mm-hmm. joy when that brother mm-hmm. got it. And then you put it on your channel. A lot of people like, oh, he was pimping him and he was this and this. I was like, you guys mm-hmm. are jacked up, man. I mean, the brother came through and showed another brother love and he helped mm-hmm. the brother out. And it was, I saw nothing but mm-hmm. upside. That's what I mean mm-hmm. about a high value mindset. Can you talk about that time mm-hmm. and, and, and uh, why you did it and, and how you and Stefan decided to start working together and stuff? Because y'all got a show on the, Monday. The, right. The, 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 the thing with that, Kevin, is I wanted to show other black men, particularly, that just because another guy is coming up, that don't mean he taking food out of your mouth. I have you. I have made more money since Kev, uh, Stephen, Stephon been on uh in the dating on the dating side of YouTube. Mm-hmm. I don't feel like 
it need to be a competition between me and him because we get the most views on this side of YouTube. Right. We'll do better and make more money working together. I wanted to set the example, Kevin. That's why I said, I'm going to set the example. I'm going to say, let me show these guys that, you know, Stefan is coming up. I'm going to reach out. I'm going to I'm 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 hold out an olive branch and we can join together and we can be cool. And just because you're giving dating advice and I'm giving dating advice and you get views and I get views, I'm going to let you guys know before y'all even try to drive a wedge between me and this young brother, I'm going to let mm -hmm. y'all guys know we ain't going to have no beef because right. y'all going to start trying to start the beef. We we did that live stream together on Monday, Kevin, and mm -hmm. in the comments, you see all the guys already trying to drive a wedge in between us, talking about some AMS school and his sons and all that. Like, already trying to start, <laughs> trying to start <laughs> junk between us. You, you know what, brother? What they do. Bro, bro, ten years ago, two years ago, I had a PR firm come in and white glove my business, and uh, mm -hmm. I've shared some of the details. But I and mm -hmm. but some of the stuff is business. And one of the things they mm -hmm. mentioned is stop reading. Told me stop reading the comments. The comments right. ain't your business. I'm, I put mm -hmm. what I do is I filter them to a certain point, and then I engage in about thirty minutes after I upload the video, and after that, I'm done because the, the bigger you get, like you said. The mm -hmm. more hate, mm -hmm. and they're, and they're trying to mm -hmm. throw you off. So I, mm -hmm. I that's what I really wanted people to hear from you that you are you mm -hmm. are we're, you're somebody that we have seen become a high value self made man on this platform mm -hmm. has success, uh, and mm -hmm. decided to reach out and help other folks. The show you're with those other guys I've never even heard of them, but the fact that mm -hmm. you're working with them they're going to benefit. And that's right. a good thing. And and this is the thing, Kevin. I guarantee you, I'm showing the other guys. I guarantee you, my money go up. It's not like mm -hmm. me putting them on, they gonna take some of my patrons. Right. Or my book sales gonna decrease because now they own. I right. guarantee you, all us four of us working together, I guarantee you, I sell more books. Damn I right. Get more patrons. And the same goes for them. And that's what I'm trying to put out in the in the black community is that we make more, y'all guys. We make mm -hmm. more money working together than against each other. And, you know and what I'm saying? O'Shea was trying to do that on his mm -hmm. platform. He kept trying to bring us together. Tried to kept trying to bring us together. Couldn't do it. Motherfuckers feel like I'm the man. I'm the man. Mm -hmm. They they got to be the they got to be the top dog. Instead of us working together, in the end, we make more money. Since well, I, I since I did that podcast with them brothers, my book sales has went up. <laughs> my patrons have went up right not down you make more money working together I guarantee you they would tell you the same thing I guarantee mm -hmm. you they would say they, they patrons done went up they book sales or whatever they got going on uh, Steph, Steph got the, uh, the uh, program I guarantee you would say sales are up we, mm -hmm. you make more money working together I, in, in New York City all my clients or at least 90% of my clients were Jewish Right. And they work together, Kevin. Yeah. They Man. that's what they do. They all work together. And that's why they where they at. And and, and black people are gonna stay where we at until mm. we learn to start working together. One of the one of the things that came when you when you really popped, one of the things that I used to see people do, and I'm an image consultant, life coach, but now I give uh high value relational advice. How about that? People would often mm. say, Well, AMS said this and Oh, mm -hmm. like trying to put what I'm saying against your saying or anything else. I'm like, no, it all counts. It depends on where you at and it's all mm -hmm. use what you can use. See, mm -hmm. that's what and that's how we can start working together because, you know, uh, uh, the whole thing, a rising tide lifts all boats. I have mm -hmm. never been one that w was going to beef. And if I try to work mm -hmm. with somebody, it was always, hey, man, how can I help you? How can I do this? How mm -hmm. can I do that? And if you don't work with me at a particular time, I just fall back, say, okay, mm -hmm. the door is always open. And people say, oh, that's weak, that's lame. But guess what? Now I'm catching fire. Mm -hmm. And the people who I work with, they're mm -hmm. getting the benefit of, who would have thought I'd be on World Star Hip Hop? I mean, mm. a dude in a suit, and I'm on World Star Hip Hop. But For I real? like the I fact- check that out. Yeah, like two days ago, I was on World Star, uh, and then but the benefit is that anybody who comes to my platform, they're gonna find everybody else I work with, and I want to keep that front and center. That 
you know, mm-hmm. now I don't now I know your platform tends to skew you a little younger and you don't necessarily mm-hmm. mention uh black as much as I have done. No, uh, right. Well, and, and here's the thing, but that, and and we don't have to. Seeing a mm-hmm. black man doing it is enough. You are showing mm-hmm. the work and you are leading by showing, helping young brothers showing. And that's an example I wanted to put out in front of people. So I'm glad we could do this collaboration because a lot of times people think my information versus your information. I'm like, no, nah, man, you got a high value man over here, high value man over here, created themselves from the country mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and doing something. And Go ahead. I, I made a video when I first started YouTube, Kevin. One mm-hmm. one of the first videos, I ain't gonna say the first, it was called uh, Find Out What Works For You. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. as far as my dating advice or any other dating coach advice or any fashion advice or, or whatever, try different ones and see what works for you. You know, in the fitness industry, what, what gets me Jack might not get you Jack. And what mm-hmm. gets me laid might not get you laid. So you have to play around with things and see what works for you. Hmm. Let me make sure what's going on in here. Somebody's saying you're getting timed out. That shouldn't. There's no way. Okay. What is the, what would you say is one of the biggest misconceptions about your platform, the way you do business? Uh, what is one of the big, mm-hmm. biggest misconceptions people have about you, period? The whole, <laughs> you got an hour. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you go to bed sooner than I do, so I ain't going to hold you up all night because oh, I, I go late. So, go ahead. So one thing that, you know, guys, people think is that I hate women. Right. Which is totally false. I love women. I just don't want to be in a relationship and I don't want to be in a a marriage. Right. Anybody who know anything about me, know I don't hang with dudes, Kevin. I only hang with females. Right. I agree. I understand, bro. (laughs) and, And so for people that think that I hate females, what I hate is, and, and you know what? I shouldn't really, I shouldn't really, really blame women, so to speak. Because what I've learned about women in these 40 years on earth, Kevin, mm-hmm. is that they only treat you how you let them treat you. Right. So they only do, if if a woman respects you, Kevin, she'll purr like a kitten. That's right. But if she don't, she'll be hell on wheels and you don't want to be nowhere around her. And that's the main thing what people got to understand with women is that it's all about respect. They have to respect you. Mm. Do me a favor. When you get a chance, type something in the chat room. I want to make sure you're not getting blocked. You need a wrench in here. And see? Okay. Um, that's where people think you and I uh, are saying different things. And I'm like, I've heard the brother say, you don't hang with dudes. You like being around beautiful women. And I've talked about, mm-hmm. I love being around women all the time. Mm-hmm. When I talk about mm-hmm. marriage and relationship, it is in a very narrow sector. I'm not saying it for everybody. I'm saying that for the guys who want to have a certain kind of corporate career, this or that, it's something you mm-hmm. need to consider. And that's mm-hmm. one of the things I think we do so poorly in the black community. We make it seem like that it's either one way or another. And it's, and it's everybody, anything can work, man. Um, but I don't want to see a bunch of dudes hanging out, man. I'd rather see a, a I'd rather see a, you out with a beautiful woman than you out with a group of dudes, because oh, that's really not motivational. <laughs> that really ain't not. That that ain't that ain't never been me, Kevin. That ain't even when I was. That's never been me. I always been the type of dude that I like the female companionship. I always been like that. So for people that think I hate women, uh, you you crazy. Well, here's the thing. When you become as popular as you have, mm-hmm. people want to get to know you. People want to make people mm-hmm. gonna make up stuff about you. And uh mm-hmm. for you, it happened. I mean, you you went viral quickly. And mm-hmm. I'm just saying the way you've handled it, I appreciate it because you have stayed mm-hmm. away from controversy, beefs, and mm-hmm. all the back and forth, mm-hmm. the stuff that destroys a black man's business. You you mm. stayed away from it, and there, and you well, reap the I, reward. Go ahead. What happened, Kevin? Was uh, when I got into that uh, little tit for tat uh, two years ago, or whatever. I started losing subscribers when I thought, and I realized I said this ain't good for business. Right. Let me tell you something, Kevin. If if beefing started making me more money. 
every video I be out that I put out will be about beef. If if that if it if it made money, yeah. I'll be down with it. It don't make money. It you lose money. In 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 the rap industry, in the rap industry, Kevin, mm -hmm. all the rappers will tell you that when they start beefing with somebody, they lose money because promoters don't want to have them at their show because they fear that beef might spill over in their show and then they got to be responsible for it. So for, rappers have learned that when you beefing like that, while you thinking you're going to make money beefing, you actually lose money because don't know promoters want to put you at a show because they're afraid that some drama might come with you. I done heard so many rappers say that on these uh, morning radio talk shows that beefing causes you to lose money. And I saw the mm -hmm. same thing, that it causes you to lose money. And that's why I let it go. It causes you to lose money. It causes you to lose support. And it and it and it screws up the whole vibe and flow. People people don't want to tune into that. So it's it, it gets to a point to where people got to wonder how you avoid responding because you get pissed off. I get pissed off when, especially if somebody say, "Well, uh, when they would get because they when you don't respond, it gets really personal." But it takes a man that has a high value mindset and has a north star to avoid responding to all the little stuff not majoring mm -hmm. in the majors, not in the minors. And you've been a great example mm -hmm. of that. Because here's the thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm an image consultant. Mm -hmm. I will, I won't make, I won't bring anything revolutionary to the, to the industry of image consulting. It's already mm -hmm. been thought of. I'll have my take mm -hmm. on it, but mm -hmm. I may say it a different way, but somebody didn't mm -hmm. said it before. Mm -hmm. Now, in the, and that's one of the thing I see in the day in your in your sector more. It's all it's a, mm -hmm. there's a lot of back and forth about who said this, yeah. who said that, right. and mm -hmm. it shouldn't be because you can all eat. Talk about that, right? Well, the thing the first let me get on that first point. You bring good interview tonight, by the way, Kevin. But the, I want to get man. on that first point about how how I don't respond. The first thing I do is I had to say I just stopped caring about what the the average YouTuber who watches is thinking about me. So mm -hmm. when you respond, Kevin, what what you are responding to is you is like, I don't want you to have my particular YouTube following thinking a certain way about me. So I'm gonna respond because you poisoning their mind with bullshit. Right. And I just got to a point where I say, you know what? Let people say and believe what the hell they want to believe. So if you want to believe that, believe it. But if you if you bring that mess on my channel, I'm blocking your ass. Thank you, brother. And so when I Go was ahead. responding, you you really don't. It's not that you really responding to the content creator. It's that you really trying to to uh, not have them influence your following your followers mm -hmm. a certain way. And then I just got to a point where I'm like, you know what? Let their ass believe what the hell they want to believe. Thank you. Thank, thank you. And that takes, so a, that takes believe, a hell of a man. <laughs> yeah, believe what... Well, I, I, I said in a couple videos, Kevin, believe whatever the hell you want to believe. Mm -hmm. I'm not... If, if somebody tell y'all I sleep with a goat, and y'all believe I sleep with a goat, but goddamn, I'm a goddamn sleeping with a billy goat, goddamn it. That's right. Believe what the hell you want to believe. I ain't responding to shit. Dude, I'd have been, I'd have been more homosexual sissy this that and i'm like all right man you, whatever i'm not gonna respond to you you can call mm -hmm. me and because because if i do because i've actually watched other people who've destroyed their businesses by getting into beefs with people who respond to trolls and carrying on so mm -hmm. your art what i found is your the workers speak for itself now mm -hmm. the, the best thing that you have done you said you don't respond and you block them that's right I mm -hmm. block my my block list. They're gonna have to give me another channel for all the folks I don't block. And then once you've done enough work and help enough people, your your mm -hmm. your people will start to respond and say, "Well, no, he ain't that, or he ain't this." I'm sure you got a bunch of uh, people that follow you that you've helped it that they they go that they'll clean it up for you. Right. They'll jump on people who come in and be like, "Bro, man, he ain't sitting here messing help my life and so forth." And that's important right. because that means you've impacted that person's life in a way that they want to fight for you. That's power, man. That's real power. 
See, that's ultimately what I, I, I see when I look at your, your channel and your brand. You have created yourself. You have created power. You gained power. You have managed power. You have distributed power. And that's something that is foreign to the black men and the black community. And that's what I hope people take away from it, man, that it's a mindset. If the brother well, could not, if he didn't have the right mindset, he could he would have destroyed himself with that same power. Go ahead on that. The one thing, guys, in, in once you become a YouTube star or a musician, a rapper, or whatever, one thing you got to be weary of, you got to be weary of clout chasing. And so, basically, uh, uh, for all you guys that don't know, a clout chaser is somebody who finds somebody bigger than them. And then they just start talking shit about them, hoping to mm -hmm. get a response. Mm -hmm. Do got, so let's say Kevin got uh what about eight, almost eighty thousand subscribers, and so let's say a channel that got eight thousand subscribers, and and they and they a fashion guy slash dating coach, and they decide you know what I'm just gonna start talking shit about Kevin, and hopefully he's dumb enough to make a response, mm -hmm. so he can send his followers over here. That is that is the oldest trick in the book, guys. And so you got to be weary of that goddamn clout chasing, where people just spew dumb shit about you to bring you down. Oh yeah. Here's the thing. Mm -hmm. For Alpha Male Strategies to say your name, you need to be paying him. <laughs> you need to. You, that's called a shout out, dude. I mean, I've had people come over and clown talk about it. you charge this much for an image consult. I'm like, you realize how how much image consulting? I was like, yes. You, you know, people right. look at you. They like the pocket watch, and here's the thing. I'm like, oh yeah, mm -hmm. because you pay for you pay by the year of experience. You pay for the experience, not the hour. And if mm -hmm. you talk about clown chasing, if you were to say somebody's name, mm -hmm. how much mm -hmm. would they have had to pay you to get that on your video? That's crazy. Right. <laughs> right that's crazy exactly kevin so understand the, something the thing, Go ahead. About that Go ahead. Is, the thing about that is kevin is that it don't get nowhere because at the end of the day it's about content mm -hmm. <laughs> what you'll see with people who do that clout chasing stuff this is what'll happen right that one particular video it'll have some views on it maybe and then the rest of the video i have shit because your mm -hmm. content sucks Right. And at the end of the day, that's what it boils down to, content. So if you think you're going to make a career off beefing, you're wrong. Let me, let, me, let me tell some people some things I've learned from you. Because I consider myself to be a student of advertising and marketing of image. But the way you came and hit the YouTube algorithm, you did whether you know it or not, I'm, I'm sure you did because I know you studied a lot of this stuff, that mm -hmm. 7 to 12 minute consistent content injecting humor, mm -hmm. And, and real mm -hmm. good content. Uh, mm -hmm. I decided to let, let, let myself start sh being more authentic, getting more mm -hmm. anime, using more uh, mm -hmm. colorful language. And guess yes. what? It did not it did not hurt my brand. It actually made me more relatable. So people can't just say, this dude look like a funeral director. But they can be like, but you know what? I fucks with him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know, that that is something I was like, you know what? Let me Let me try this. Because people at the end of the day are coming to see your content. They want to see your mm -hmm. your take on it. Mm -hmm. And that's important. Mm -hmm. Somebody's giving you that attention. Uh, I think you do a good job with managing that and giving them what they want. Because you don't mm -hmm. waste a lot of time. Talk about that. Mm -hmm. Talk about how you well, give them what they the want the way they want it. Say that again, Kevin. Tell, them about, tell, them about, tell people about how you give them what they want, how they want it, the way they want it. The thing is, guys, is... If you want people, and I just saw the video you had uh, about 13 things you didn't you didn't know about me from cancer to um, content creator. Mm -hmm. If you want to be successful at this right here, people got to feel like they know you. Mm -hmm. And if people don't feel like they know you or getting the authentic you, you won't get nowhere. If you're going if you're gonna get on here and in real life be one way, then you cut on this camera and then you want to be proper. What I've learned is people respect you just being yourself and mm -hmm. authentic and raw that's what people want and people can smell when people are you know getting on camera putting on a persona and acting like something they're not 
Mm-hmm. And another thing you need to understand about this also is this is entertainment. And if you're not fun to watch, you're not entertaining to watch, nobody's going to keep watching you. Right. And so that's, hard for a lot, that's hard for a lot of people to deal with because like when I moved to Atlanta, um, mm-hmm. I'm, I moved from a market to where I didn't really run into that many people who recognize me to every day in Atlanta, somebody's recognizing me. And they see mm-hmm. me and I'm usually dressed like this because mm-hmm. I am authentically this. So people can say mm-hmm. he's that, that's what he is. And that's mm-hmm. the point. They want authentic you uh, mm-hmm. and they want to feel because this is they're giving you their time. They're paying with their time mm-hmm. and they want to feel like they're getting something back for it. So I think that's mm-hmm. something good that you brought to this side, giving people what they want, how they want it. And the, and the public and the market has responded by Give, giving you the, getting the subscribers, getting the views, getting the Patreons, mm-hmm. getting the business. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I said, I, you're a success story that I think should be studied. And now when, when you decide to go ahead and start the collaborations and everything else, I'm like, oh man, the sky's the mm-hmm. limit for this brother. I mean, mm-hmm. this time next year, uh, you, you gonna, it, it wouldn't surprise me if you go mainstream and, and, uh, and be up on the Today Show <laughs> Because you got the look and you have right. the content and the body of work, man. That, that's right. a damn good thing. The, the the main thing is, at this point, you always need to have growth, Kevin. Mm-hmm. And so what I see that's big right now from the Up and Smoke podcast and some of these other podcasts is that podcasting is real big right now. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I said, okay. I ought, to, I ought to get me a couple of guys and we start our own podcast because I seen what Joe Rogan just got to go to Spotify, right? Right. And I'm like, why can't I do that? Why, I, maybe I don't get 100 million, but, you know, I'll take 50, you know. Why can't exactly. two years from now after podcasting, why can't I go to Spotify and they give me 50 million, me and my boys 50 million? Right. So that's the, that. so you have to always have growth and can't just be complacent and stay in the same spot. And a lot of people do that. Dude, you also you have to be willing to fail. Mm-hmm. See, be and this business you got to be willing to fail, and you gonna and your failure is gonna be public. Uh, and I, I look at I don't look at his failures. I just learn what works best. I tried this; it right. didn't work. Okay, we're gonna try to do that. You know, the growth is always there. You mentioned podcasts. I'll be on the uh, roommates podcast uh, this coming this coming Saturday. I moved to Atlanta to have access to this kind of stuff. Um. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean, it, I, you've been podcasting you've been on the is huge. Podcast? Yeah, yep. Yeah, I'll be on there Saturday. That's pretty, that's pretty good, man. I just did that. Yeah, yeah. They meant yeah, See and see, that's what we need because the roommates, Derek Jackson, Stefan Labossier, and mm-hmm. uh, Shan Bodie has been on there. The the sexologist. And that's mm-hmm. an entire ecosystem of people that we have yet to collaborate with, work with. And there's some mm-hmm. commonality somewhere. And you mm-hmm. got to be willing to 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 get out there and try something new. So, yeah, podcasting is going to be huge for you guys, man. That's going to be huge. That's what, Especially you got the younger guys, I'm... too. Woo! Mm-hmm. Exactly. So, man, I don't want to hold you up all night, man, because I know uh, my show starts late, and I know you get an early start. Um, right, I appreciate, right. I appreciate I'll, I'll you. A, I'll take a couple of these calls with you, though. Come, come on, can. let's let's get it. Let's get let's get some calls right. coming in here. All right, let's get some, let me get some calls coming in here. You know, I always right, like to be respectful go. of my uh of my audience. Let me see. Copy the invite link and send it. All right, guys, we're gonna do a quick intermission and we're gonna get the uh, get the calls set up. Uh, give me a second. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Money work. El mundo quiere dinero. Todo money, money, todo el dinero Solo 
par de gente se lleva el botín entero Funny, funny, pasa verdadero Si tienen la verde siempre llegará primero Pero llegaremos antes o después Solo a lo suyo, que Dios te lo ve Que por más que tarde lo veré caer Somos malos buenos y tenemos que El dinero ya lo veré No vendo mi alma, lo lograré Seré el más grande, no olvidaré De dónde vengo ni cómo voy Money work Yo digo las cosas como son, no quiero ninguna, ninguna aceptación Tampoco vengo a pedir perdón, porque mis sentimientos se volvieron la canción yeah. No me vale mucho como tú me ves, sabes tú me llegas solo a los pies Para mí ser grande es un interés, ser un buen humano para mí es un deber El dinero ya lo veré, no vendo mi alma, lo lograré Seré el más grande, no olvidaré All right, we are getting ready to go Call on, don't call me on my phone. You can't get in that way. <laughs> Stop calling. The link is in the description. The link is in the description. That's how you get on the show. That's how you get on the show. Hello? Uh, AMS. Tremaine. Yeah, I'm here, bro. I'm here. Go ahead. Uh, Tremaine, you need to unmute yourself. Tremaine, yeah, what's hello? going on? What's going on, hey, fam? Guys... Go ahead. Yeah, so um, I'm 21 years old. Um, I just 21 back in June. Um, I've been watching AMS. AMS, I want to say you changed my life, man. What you did. Um, and Kevin Samuels, I actually found this is video. And man, you guys like blessed my life. Like my whole life's changed. I work 80 hours a week. Um, I'm about to finish up grade school. You got a question for us, bro? We got a lot of people coming. You got a question? No, no, I just want to give a quick shout out. Okay, man. We got to, we got, we're trying to get to the question, though. Appreciate the shout out. All right. How we doing? Thanks, bro. Bye bye. All right, man. Do there, do remove. Uh, who's up next? Let's see. Let me make sure we hide some of these folks that, you know, they like to come through and troll, Karen. Though. <laughs> Come on, uh, uh, Gus, you need to unmute yourself. Hello? Gus. He's not on. Yeah. Go yeah, ahead. Man. Go ahead. You got a question? Yeah, I got a question. Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so my question is, um, so I'm uh, 26 years old, born and raised in uh, Philadelphia. I would say that um, I'm from the hood and I kind of like made it out. I'm a engineer. I was a professional software engineer. All right, get to the question, man. Get, get to the get to the questions, bro. We gotta yeah, speed got to speed it up. Start, Brother, got a time. We got let's go. So my question, y'all need is, to get to the questions, you, man. <laughs> so my go question ahead. is, how do you work with um, work with other brothers that? are still in like that um struggling mentality and try to bring them try to bring them a, a little bit forward and help them out you want to take that off AMS? ams repeat his question i could his, his, basically uh his, his question was basically i'm young and I, I, I want to help brothers who are in, still in that hood or struggling mentality exactly yeah first thing you need to know is ask yourself are they trying to help themselves if they're not trying to help themselves, then you can't help them. You can't say nobody that's not trying to save themselves. If they're trying to save themselves, then you can help them. But I ain't helping nobody that I don't see working, trying to improve themselves. You got that, man? I'm about to do a switch over on my system, so there may be a, a quick yeah, interrupt. Yeah, I'm echoing. Yeah, hold on.
Testing, testing. There we go. That should have it. We got it? What happened to the show? Do, 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 do. Uh... There we go. Uh, AMS is there. Sorry, guys. We had to do a switch over. I got you. I'm going to unmute AMS. Unmute yourself, man. All right. All right. There we go. I had to do a switch over because we're getting too much uh, uh, background noise. So we got Aaron and Noah coming in. Uh, Aaron, I'm you. Hey, how you doing? Go ahead. What's your question? All right. Check this out. I make, um, $65,000 a year, but, um, I actually, uh, been doing stocks lately. I've been making about $4,000 a month doing stocks, which technically makes me over a hundred thousand dollars, but, um, a year, but. I don't know if that would make me like a high value man or not, or you suggested I still go to work and get another part-time job. Um, for, let, me, let me get that. Go ahead. Go ahead. With me, brother, um, how value, how value to me, I know, I, I know a lot of people might disagree with this, mm-hmm. but uh, how value to me is a mindset. So, and what I mean by that is, are you happy in life with what you do? Thank and you. I, and I, and I give you a point of what I mean. Let's say you got a job, you make a hundred grand a year, 150 grand a year, but you kind of mm-hmm. hate it, right? And let's, I hate say my you job. Got this, and let's say you hate your job. I hate my job. Okay. See, you can't be a high value man doing something you mm-hmm. hate. You know what that tells me? That tells me you have fear, fear mm-hmm. of trying something else. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so you can't, you can't be a high value man if you hate what you're doing, living in fear of trying something that you really love. And that's and see, high value men have that mindset. That abundance mindset, that no fear mindset, that no no fear of failure mindset. So making six figures won't make you a high value man. You know what'll happen? You'll be you'll be unhappy, and you know what you'll try to do? You try to get that happiness from a woman. And you see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You have to be completely happy as is in your life. You, to me, you can be a high value man making fifty grand a year, but you doing what you love to do. And you wake up every morning with a smile on your face and it's just your passion and your purpose. Opposed to the mm-hmm. guy over here that makes 150 grand a year, 200 grand a year, and he mm-hmm. fucking wants to slice his fucking wrist every yeah. fucking day. There you go. You see what I'm saying? There you- yeah, I feel see- Hey, thanks for you guys. Yeah, for see, that too. I, I won't go ahead and go ahead. Just that, you know, go ahead. I got to get to the uh, next question. I got to get to the next person. I got to get to the next person. Right, one question. Okay, see, one thing I want you guys to understand is what. When I talk about high value, I'm defining it in a very narrow band. But at the end of the day, this is that it's personal happiness. Mm-hmm. That millionaires kill themselves yearly. Yep. Yes. So what I define as high value, it may is going to be different than what AMS defines as high value. Mm-hmm. You got to understand what you do, understand your why. Why you're doing it in personal happiness. I don't say every man needs to be high value from a resource standpoint. Mm-hmm. That's not for everybody. Mm-hmm. So let me get let me get to the next person. Under, unmute yourself, 818. 818, first name, please. Yo, can you hear me? Yes, what's your name? Mike. What? Oh, uh, what? You have a question for AMS? Oh, uh, yeah, I have a question for AMS. Um, well, my question was, where does he think the next 10 years for us, for us young guys? Because I saw that podcast he was doing with all these other, with all the other dudes, but... What does he see for the young dudes that are trying to get on their purpose and trying to, you know, come up as well in the next 10 years? Like, where does he see the dating game going? You know, with social media and, and the internet? Okay, so 10 years, from, what, the dating social media scene over the next 10 years, AMS. This is the thing where, this is the thing where I try to get guys to understand. And this is what I've been talking about from the get-go. The only way, the, you know what I tell guys when they come to me now about, life and stuff like this as far as women and stuff 
I say, I want you to build a life of happiness without a woman. So right there now, you what, go. I've been telling, what I've been telling guys is, for the next 30 days, I don't want you to talk to no women. I want you to be get your life fulfilled, happy without women. I want you to get some hobbies and some purpose in your life to where you are content. If every woman on the earth disappeared, your life would be content. And then you bring in a woman in, she's the cherry on top, but you are already the cake that's been made. You don't need her. Right. And that's what I'm, so with this social media thing guys are going through and stuff like this, it won't matter to the guys that have happiness, purpose, and ho hobbies in life, opposed to the guys who hate their jobs, have no hobbies, and they're looking for female validation because their lives suck. And so that's what guys do. They go and they have these shitty lives, and then they want women to rescue their lives. And so you're only going to be frustrated if you're trying to get your happiness from women. What you need to be doing, if, if, if you or any other guy, young guy that's watching this, you need to build a happiness of fulfillment without women. What are you doing? What hobbies do you have outside of your purpose? What are you doing? You need, when I, my last Skype session I had with a guy, I told him, I want you to map out your off days as in things that you want to do. I don't want you sitting around the house, swiping right, swiping left, hoping to get lucky on Tinder. I said, I want your butt out the house. I want you to map out your day as in, okay, Thursday, I'm going to go do this. Friday, I'm going to go do this. Saturday, I'm going to go do this. Sunday, I'm going to go do this. I don't want you sitting around the house feeling sorry for yourself with nothing to do, bored and lonely. There you go. Devin, you're on with Alpha Male Strategies. What, what question yeah, do you can have? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. What question do you have? All right. I'm a 21-year-old real estate agent. I want to ask, how do I go about growing my brand, building my business during this pandemic? It's, it's kind of hard right now. Okay. Well, let me, let me take this one. Okay, go ahead, brother. Hard is the cost of admission. Take that out of your vocabulary. It's the cost. <laughs> if it was easy, everybody would do it. I got you. Second question. I mean, second point. You're 21 years old. Youth isn't an excuse. Plan. Business plan, marketing plan, and then who is guiding you on that? You may be very good at sales, but you could suck at the, at the guts of the business. I am big on coaching and, and guidance. The best thing I ever did in my, my corporate sales career was take $5,000 that I could not afford and invested in more coaching. And it helped me become the exceptional salesperson I was. AMS, what do you have on that? Bro, guys use social media just to look at ass. And it's, it's, it's sad. Right. It's right. sad. Mm -hmm. Bro, I follow some real estate channels that I watch. It's this lady got Atlanta Homes for sale. I watch her and it's this other lady, Dion Lowe, where they just show the real estate properties where they trying to sell on YouTube, free fucking advertising. Right. On YouTube. Why aren't you using social media to promote your business? It's free. It costs nothing. If you go to those YouTube channels, you'll see that they get hella views. They got a lot of subscribers. And it's free and they making money off of the YouTube views. So what I would recommend for your real estate thing you're doing, start a YouTube channel and start filming it. Do just go to go the channel is called Atlanta Homes for Sale and she'll pop up. And you'll see how she do her, her outlet, how she does. And she's not the only one. It's people with Dallas and homes in California. And they just, you know, advertise on YouTube, they real estate properties, and they go and they film the houses and stuff like that. And then they put the contact info in there off of YouTube. That's all you got to do right there to start it. And that'll help you out a lot. You know, you, you sit around, I mean, you probably watch, you know, sports videos all day and nothing videos all day. And this, this not only is going to help your business, but it's going to create another revenue stream. There you go. Uh, thank you, Devin. Jacob, you got a question for AMS. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, I can yeah, hear you. All right. My question is, what are five things I can do as a young guy to reach that next level or mastery that I want to achieve. Top five actions. Five things, uh, look. Or you can limit it. Yeah, see, how old are you? 19, sir. Are you in college? Yes, sir. Who's your mentor? Um, My dance mentor is, I have a dance mentor. You have a who mentor? A dance mentor, his name is Malik Leonard. Okay. Um, if you're in college, one of the best things I can say is you got, here's the one, let me give you, young guys, you need to go out there and fail a lot. Mm. From 18 to 30, I want you working 60, 80 hours a week, giving mm. about five to 7% of your time for pussy, and I want you to fail mm. a lot. I need you to try mm. a business, fail at it. Try something, fail better. 
Fear of failure keeps most people stuck in accounting jobs that they hate for six or seven years versus going mm -hmm. out and being fucking Gary V and failing at stuff. Look at Gary V's YouTube channel. He's trying to multitude mm -hmm. of things right in your face. Some shit that works, mm -hmm. stuff that don't work. So I don't mm -hmm. need five. I just need one. Go fail. Mm -hmm. Thank you, guys. AMS, you have anything on that one? What was his question? I didn't even hear his question. He said, he said he wanted the top five things he could do to help him fast track to success, more or less. Five? Five things to uh, fast track success. What 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 are he? What is he doing now, Kevin? He's nineteen year old college student. What what do you have a, a passion for? Um, I have a passion for um building websites through uh, web development. Okay, first thing off the bat is if that's something you genuinely have a passion for, that's going to be something that you don't mind working on 60, 70 hours a week. That's why I wanted to know that. So that's the first step of action is find out what you're passionate about. Now we need to find out how we're gonna, you know, get that to the next level. So you ever thought about reach, cause I get this all the time. You ever thought about, and this is where the work comes in at. You ever thought about reaching out to people who have websites and offering them to redo their website yep. for fee or, you know, whatever. Now that's where the work comes in at. See, mm -hmm. you don't want to do that. You, you just, you just want it to fall. You just want people to come knock on your door and find you on it. And see, that's what I'm talking about. How I built my security business, and how I built my personal training business was I went out and I talked to people. I opened my fucking mouth. Nobody's mm -hmm. going to come look for you. So if you want that thing, that's what you have a purpose and passion for. So you're going to have to reach out. I get these emails all the time. Hey, I'll redo your uh, website, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, bitch, I love my website. But that goes beyond the point. The point I'm trying to make is you need to reach out and try to ask people, hey, I'll do your website, such and such. And then you can get some traction because then they can do spread word of mouth and all this. And then you have reviews. So it takes a little traction. It's sort of like starting a YouTube channel, right? You get going, you start off as kind of slow. Then you get a few subscribers. Then they start sharing your videos and then you gain a little traction. And that's basically what you need to do with your business, brother. Uh, mm. Reach out, get some traction once you gain some traction. And then it starts to build itself. There you go. Thank you. Thank you, Jacob. Go ahead and hang up. See, AMS. Mm -hmm. When you were a personal trainer, you had to get out and sell on that sales floor, right? Yes, see, I had to get out there and prospect. See, and I'm a salesperson, 20 plus years. You hear a lot of sales in us. My job starts mm -hmm. when people say no. Y'all mm -hmm. yes. got to get out and do the activity and get the rejection. Yes. <laughs> it's sales, baby. Uh, Kate, so, go ahead. Let, go let, ahead. Me, let me speak on that, Kevin. So any of y'all guys that understand anything about business right here, any business that you open uh, you know, unless you blessed with a big old large marketing budget, normally you're going to have to get out and then you're going to have to open your mouth and do some sales. Then once you get some money in, coming in, then you can afford to start spending some money on marketing and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But the point being is initially, guys, you got to get on your grind and start. You know, I don't care if you want to be an electrician. I don't want to. I don't care if you want to be a cable man, a cameraman, a photographer, whatever you want to be, a videographer, whatever you want to do. You got to get out and open your mouth initially. All right. We got uh, seven people in there. Tell me, how many calls do you, do you have time for? I, I can go, bro. Keep going. Okay. I'm good. King Rock, uh, you're on with AMS. What do you got for him? Okay. So my question is, um, number one, I started a, uh, um, it's a, it's a movie streaming social network. It's the first black owned movie streaming social network. Mm -hmm. So, um, my question is, uh, how do, how would you go about, in your personal opinion, for both of you guys, how would you go about trying to get the word out about it? <laughs> like YouTube ads, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, is there any type of marketing strategies? Let me try this. That, um, Let me try this. Okay. okay. Bro, bro um, is there, is there a demand for what you're trying to do? Mm. I think there is. Okay. Here's the harsh reality. Netflix, okay. HBO, all these streaming services exist. They got billions of dollars of advertising budget and pipe. Mm. Why do they need to go to yours? Just because mm. it's black, you mm. know, see, you're not disrupting the market. And see, mm. I, and then when I did, you, are you familiar with a brother named Ramil Amir, AMS? Uh-uh, never heard of him. A brother named Ramil Amir. I did a, a, a show called Welcome to the Lion's Den. Think about Shark Tank meets The Voice. And for six weeks, we had black men calling in with their businesses and their business ideas. And 90% mm -hmm. of them were not disrupting a the market in any kind of way, had no real budget. 
This may mm. be a passion, a hobby or something, but building a standalone platform is going to require lots of money of investment. Unless you have a, a, a line of credit or, or, or a lot of money, I don't even know how you're going to compete in this space because you still got to go against Netflix and all these other places. It just may not be a good idea. Right. That's the Shark Tank thing. Shark Tank may say, good passion, no execution. AMS, you got anything sure. different on that? I would think I would think like this here, whatever you doing, right? Whatever you gonna put on that 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 network, right? That streaming service, right? Mm -hmm. Why couldn't you just put it on YouTube and put ads through it? Yes. No, no, I I, I do. So so there's all the shows that I create that are on the platform are also on YouTube, Facebook, but I'm just trying to find out which one is the best when it comes to like YouTube ads or is it Facebook, Facebook ads. ads or Instagram? Facebook ads. Facebook ads. Facebook has the best advertising platform in the in the world. I mean, I spent 15 That's years in advertising. Yeah. yeah, 15 years in advertising and marketing. You can actually create your own audience, meaning I want black men between 18 and 45 years old living in Los Angeles who are Republican, who are left-handed, who have a poodle. Target. But you gotta have money to run, you gotta have money to run through those things. Face Facebook is great for that. YouTube is great for the money side. Now, uh, this is where marketing plans come in. You need a marketing strategy. And this is where the business plan and marketing plan, because you can't just decide to do something. Last part about advertising. Right. When I sold advertising, people made advertising decisions based on their feelings. Nope, you have mm. to have a plan. And just because you're not seeing results in two days, three days, maybe you're not supposed to see mm. them for six months. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, King Rock, thank you. Uh, we're gonna get on to the next thank person. You. Unmute, uh, Debbie. Uh, we're gonna ask first person to unmute Joel, Noah, uh, Debbie, a DV or whatever their name is. DVV. Uh, DVV. Okay, a woman. Uh oh. What you want? Uh oh. <laughs> what you want? You calling two grown goddamn oh, please, men? Please. Please don't drag me, Kev, because, right. you know, I'm not, I, I just had a question about um your video um, this, yesterday. Now, this is, um, now hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I'm on with, a, I'm on with a guest, Alpha Male Strategies. If you got a, something for me, you got to call back at the appropriate. Well, it's, it's for, it's kind of for both of you, actually. Right. Um, It's going to be interesting to get um two, um, you know, opinions on this. I really just wanted to know. Joe, um, go ahead and unmute yourself. No, there's no, that's not how we do that. Um, Noah. Are you talking? No, the VV. We're gonna. I'll, I'll have you wait. Willie, go ahead. Hey, so this is uh for AMS. So AMS, I know that you used to stay in New York, but uh, you moved to Atlanta, I believe. And I've always assumed that's because your dollar was stretched further. So I was gonna ask. I'm in the military, and I personally love the West Coast, but I've been seeing some prices like in Florida that I feel like my dollar could go further, and I could get a bigger house. Would you advise I go to the location I prefer, but I would have to live more on a basic level for my income or go somewhere where I'm decent to okay with, but my house and my lifestyle would be a lot better? You muted yourself, AMS. I don't know how you got muted. There you go. Okay. Go All right. First thing I would say, brother, is I make my money off the internet, so my money stays the same everywhere I go. If you move to Florida from California, you got to take into account that your income is going to drop and it's not going to be what it is in California. M my situation is different from your situation is what I'm saying. If I was mm -hmm. a personal trainer in New York City and I decided to come be a, new, a personal trainer in Atlanta, I wouldn't make half the money I made in New York City. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you got to take the income into account e too. Also, you just can't say, uh, well, I'm a, the house going to be cheaper. Well, also, whatever job you're going to get, going to pay less also. Mm -hmm. so I understand where you're coming from. Mine's is a little different, though, because in my situation, I would still be stationed in uh, California, so I would be getting the extra California pay. It's just oh, I had gone. a plan. Yeah, I'll be, be gone. Okay, let me take yeah. Let me take Go ahead. In, in Florida, you don't even got the state tax. And, and California got one of the highest state taxes. I'll be gone. Yep. If I'm going to make California money in Florida, I, I, I'll, I'll be halfway there right now. Go ahead, Kevin. Okay, See, the way I calculate cost of living is mm -hmm. how how much it costs me to live there. Oklahoma had a low cost of living, but it cost a mm -hmm. lot as far as I'm concerned. I didn't have Neiman Marcus, Saks Fifth Avenue. I didn't have concerts. Mm -hmm. I didn't have Papado. I didn't have, mm -hmm. I didn't have a thriving black community. I didn't have a lot of mm -hmm. stuff. I didn't have football games. I, it cost mm -hmm. a lot to live there, even though it was cheap. Right. 
See, right. here's the thing. I'm about going happiness. I I tell you what, I miss New York City. Mm -hmm. I miss New York City uh, mm -hmm. with that high rent and everything else because I love mm -hmm. living in that mug. I love yeah, living in that mug. I was I working 12 or 16 hours, but I loved every minute of it. I mm -hmm. did too, Kevin. There you go. So I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna be back for long. There you go, uh, Willie. <laughs> How are you? Do you have any kids? Uh, no, just me and my wife. Okay. Uh, oh, you got a wife there. See, if you if you were single, I'd say go live in a shoebox and go fit, go fail. Go fucking fail, man. Right. Go try it. The worst thing that happens, you can go back. The doors are always going to be open. Trust. All right, man. Right, Appreciate right. it. Uh, it let's see. Joel, you next. Uh, Joel. Hey there. Got a question from AMS. Yes, I do. My name is uh, Joel. I'm 23. I'm a software developer working on hitting my first 100K this year. My question mm -hmm. relates to aligning myself with my purpose. Mm -hmm. My question is, how do I balance my time outside of work? I work full time between multiple side projects and uh, side projects and businesses and my social goals of uplifting black men and women through the tech industry, because I feel like they both align with my purpose, but they both take a lot of time. Well, the first thing I'm going to do right off the back is that sounds like a whole lot on your plate. Yeah. So just just to get, put, put some in reference. Once I started getting some traction on YouTube, I knew that I started cutting train, uh, the clients down. Even though I love training and stuff like that, I knew that if I wanted this to succeed, I had to give it more of my time. Mm -hmm. So you being stretched thin like that, it makes me think that you're not going to be able, whatever you really passionate about, it's not going to reach the full potential that it could yeah. if you gave it your all. You stretch so thin. You get what I'm saying? In other yeah. words... I wouldn't have free books out right now if I would have kept personal training. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so I couldn't do a podcast right now. Me doing this full time allows this to be greater than, I, and I'm just amazed. Like for instance, right? Making my video just to draw a reference, right? Uh, I'm able to research my emails and read more emails to come up with more genuine ideas for the videos because I don't have, I don't have, to train and do all this mm -hmm. and that other. When I was training, I couldn't even, it, it was hard for me to start keeping the ideals fresh. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I do. By me having this only, I'm able to go through emails and I'm able to find that email that's, oh wow, this will make a great video because I'm able to give it my all. So you you might want to look into that and see, make sure you're not stretching yourself thin as in so you can be great in something. Let me okay. let me add this to it because I I agree with everything you said. I'm gonna add one more thing to it. Who is your coach? Uh, I kind of I deal with a couple of coaches. Um, I have a coach who is who. Uh, my, let, me, let me let me let me balance this. Who is the coach that you're paying for? I'm currently not paying for a coach. Then it's not I'm a coach. For a coach to pay for. Okay, then it's not a coach. Young men understand something. Successful men have some things in common. They tend to be early risers. They tend to work out. They tend to put in long hours. They tend to have mentors or coaches. See, the things that what AMS just gave you was coaching to keep you on the path because you're young, full of exuberance and ideas, but you can't do everything at one time. Mm. Coaching, uh, exactly. coaching, Dan Pena, uh, follow Success Magazine with mm -hmm. Darren Hardy. Find some online inspirations, but you need a coach of some sort. And, just, and coaching is just like therapy. Uh, you're going to mm -hmm. have to work to see which one finds and suits you. But this is a part of my budget. I, I, I got uh, uh, two coaches and a mentor, uh, one coach and two mentors right now. So mm -hmm. uh, thanks, Joe. Next up, Thank you. Go, uh, Noah. And that's going to wrap it up. I want to respect your time, man. Okay, bro. Uh, okay. Noah, you're on with Alpha Male mm -hmm. Strategies. What do you have for him? What? All right, you sound like you don't. Here's what I need you to do. I'm gonna I'm mute you. I'm gonna try this again. If you're a troll, cool. I'll just hang up on you. If not, turn off the background noise. Make sure we're ready to go and answer your question. All right, go ahead. That's what I thought. He was a troll. All right, cool, man. Uh, a right. Alpha Mister AMS, man. I appreciate you showing up, bro. No problem, um, bro. I'm glad you're here in Atlanta. If we didn't have this COVID, man, ooh, I don't know if the world can handle you and be in the same place, bro. I just don't know. <laughs> don't know, don't know, man. Uh, yeah, man, I'm going to have to slide by and get you with my time for it, dude, and get you a little. Cause you, how tall are you? 6'4". Oh, yeah. And, and being an influencer, yeah, there's an entire yeah. world of free merchandise coming your way. Down here, they, 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 all these people down here, they got the stores here, then 
and hats and they all want to probably get on your platform there's a there's a lot of money in uh influencing as we know down i here. believe it man there's a lot of it. I believe but it. i want to respect your time i know you're an early riser appreciate, appreciate you man. getting on here thank you so much appreciate hope it. to do this again brother i'm going to still stay on a little bit longer folks uh thanks man I, i'll talk to you later be good Send me your good, send me yeah. your PayPal information too. Send me that down. No man, you don't owe me that. No, no, no. You know how I do, man. Hit me that down there. Appreciate nah. it. Thank you, my nah, brother. Donate it. Donate it to a charity in my name. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, bro. Alpha Male Strategies, everybody. Look here, man. The line is still open. Davy, uh, you can call back in. Here's the thing. I did not want to interrupt my guest um with um um I got to respect people's time. So here it is. If you want to call in and ask me questions, uh, you're more than welcome to. But still want to keep them on the same topic. Let me go ahead and get this back up. I'll put the link back in the description. Guys, when it gets right down to it, you have to be able to know it. Having a passion for something is great, but you have to be able to put the work in. As a martial artist, you don't just go to your first day of Kung Fu class and start doing a jump spinning outside crescent kick or butterfly kick. You got to start with boring stuff. Horse stance, one foot stance, low stance, cat, fit, cat stance, bow stance. Boring stuff. The, the basics. And the basics of any business is when you're a small business, Cash is king. If you got to have customers coming in or you have no business, you have your core skill, you have, may have your core talent, but are you good at the business part of it? That's why I'm so a big a fan of business plans, marketing plans, and understanding what your focus is. Maybe you need a partner. And this is going to take a lot of work. From 18 to 30, eat shit. Sleep in a cardboard box, a hovel, okay? Give yourself a lot of temp, a lot of leeway to fail. All right, here's what we're going to do. Uh, I'm going to take some of these calls. I see you guys in here. I got another 30 minutes to take phone calls. <clears throat> Ruben, we're going to admit all of you guys. Do-do-do-do-do-do. Uh, for anybody who wants to troll, you might as well know that you're not going to be on video. So I don't trust some of you guys just popping up on here. <laughs> uh, let's see. Quentin, unmute. Ruben, how are you? Hey, Mr. Samuel. I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, okay. Uh, well, contain the excitement. And what's the question? Yes, yes, yes. Um, so I just got to the United States like six years ago and went through high school, just graduated like two years back. I'm in college. I'm trying to balance this whole working and college thing, but I don't know. Question, 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 question. I'm trying to, I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how, how to balance working full-time and going to college at the same time. Uh, well, what are you going to school for? Electrical engineering. Uh, really, there shouldn't be a balance. You should be so tired at school and work. Are you having to work to pay for school? No. Why are you working? Well, right now. Are you having to work to pay uh, for school? No, no. Then why are you working? I'm working, I'm working to like support um, pay bills and stuff like that. Okay, so all right. If you're going to school, you need to focus on school. Work the minimum amount required so you can get out of school. You don't need to be trying to party, yeah. have a social life, and all that kind of stuff. Get out of school first because yes, electrical... I actually, I actually don't do any of that. All right, so um, there are plenty of resources on... If you have an accredited engineering program, there are plenty of resources on campus Go to the College of Engineering. Have you spoken to the dean of your college? Have you used any of the resources at the college? Because there are plenty of people who have to work. Um, I don't know. Do you live on campus? You live in an apartment. I live in an apartment. Okay. Is your apartment near the school? 
it's pretty close. Do you, about, do you um, have a do you have a car payment or anything like that? Oh no, I don't. Do okay. The whole All right. Thing. So so I would I move, I move move as close on campus as possible. Minimize your expenses. Minimize your expenses. Get a roommate. Because you got to get out of college first. That's the main thing. Okay. That's the way to balance all that. Because I'm telling you, I worked when I was in college in chemical engineering, and it's a bitch. All right. It's not something you want to do. Davey, call back in. Uh, Robert, unmute yourself. Hey, how's it going? How are you? What's your, thumbs up. Thank you. Uh, what's your question? Um, so I just had two things. One, um, in your opinion, what's the difference between a coach or what's what's – What's the difference that you draw between a coach and a mentor? Okay. And then what's the best way to find uh, one or the other or both? A coach, a mentor is informal, long-term, uh, and it's holistic. Coaching, short-term, defined, specific, i.e. a free throw coach. It's not going to teach you how to get stronger. It's going to help you with free throws. A basketball mentor, you just talk to them about what's going on, and they're more like there to give you advice, but they don't really give you any structure. One is structured, one's unstructured. Mentors are free in general, but very organic. Most people, if you haven't found a mentor by age 23, you're not going to find them. That's why most people need coaching. Uh, I do mentoring, but it's very, you know, see, most people want coaching and they go for mentoring and mentoring has no deliverable outcome. Meaning that if you were to hire someone to be your mentor, you're paying them for their presence and whatever advice, they're not sitting there telling you, go do this, do that. They're just giving you advice. Okay. A coach is trying to help you get towards a deliverable outcome, i.e. free throws. Which one is best depends on where you're at. I think you need both. It's hard to find a mentor. It's better to find a coach. All right. I think that bounced. I think you bounced out. Ladies, you can call in too. Um, uh, I don't know what this person name. AT. Da, 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 da. Okay. Unmute yourself. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, I'm here. What's up? What's your name? Oh, uh, my name's Noah. Nice to meet you. Noah, did you just call in? Uh, no, I've been in here, but for some reason my name's not on okay. Uh, what what question do you have? Yeah, so I'm currently like a a college athlete right now, and um, I go to Ohio State. Um, go Buckeyes! I yeah, appreciate it. Um, so I'm most likely gonna be a professional next year, but um, I'm kind of also thinking about a plan B, but I'm not really sure what that is yet. And my major right now is. Um, so what's your ultimate sports. question? If, if... Oh, so like what advice do you have for like a college student that doesn't know what he wants to do yet? Are, now you just said your like college student his, is probably going to go pro. Sport. Did you say you, yeah. you're likely going to go pro? Yeah. Do you anticipate getting drafted? Yeah. Um, Who's managing your, who's going to be man, who's your business manager? Um, what do you mean by business manager? Well, you're going to have, okay, let, how much is a rookie salary? So I'm, I play soccer. Okay. So I, I thought you said, you said football. 50. Did you say football? No, no, it's soccer. Okay. I, all right. Soccer. Well, so uh, then you don't need that. How much are you going to be making pro soccer? So it's around average salary for rookies, probably like, 50, 60, 65,000 a year. Okay. Um, so this is more, and how much, how much time is that going to take? Um, like to get all that money or? No, no, no. I mean, is it, I don't know what soccer entails. Is it like a full-time profession? Yes. Yeah, full-time, full-time, but. Okay. I'm and what, okay. About, what's your, and what's your degree in? Uh, sports administration. Okay. So you're going to have a, you can play soccer full time for $60,000, which is not bad coming out of college, but it takes full time. But there is a show. Yeah. All right. You need a career um, and you need a plan. I don't know much about soccer. What I do know is this. I thought you were saying you're going to go pro in football. Um, I don't know how long the average soccer career is. Um, 
it's pretty long from from my position it's pretty long but still you're talking about you're not talking about some significant money um at the beginning no well, but well, it's always a possibility well, you can always win a lottery too i don't deal with possibilities i deal with probabilities what is the average yeah. length of a soccer career what is the average amount of money a soccer player earns and then i, yeah. I map that against what did, did i go to college for and what could i earn out in the open market now okay now that, that's really what it comes down to and and do you have a father yeah uh, and is he active in your life yeah definitely 100 percent. okay then you guys need a plan you need a okay. plan you need a plan because if you're going to be in in major league soccer uh if you're any good there could be all kind of things that Maybe the salary of the league pays you, but endorsements, this, that, advertising, all those things. It ultimately comes down to a plan. Yeah, that's why, um, like, because soccer's not year-round, so, it, like, the off-season, um, I'm looking for a career which I can pursue. I, well, obviously, I'm going to go to grad school. Well, I can't I really, wanna... I, don't, I, I don't know, but it, it depends on, here's the thing. Uh, it's not year-round, but it's still year-round money. So, yeah. um, again... I would have, I don't know, what's your degree in? Sports what? Sports administration, sports business. So there's really, it's not, a, it's not really anything in the open market that that's for. Um, mm -hmm. You need a career as a fall. You need something you can fall back on when soccer is over. That's not necessarily sports related unless you want to be tied to the sport for the rest of your life. That's why you see yep. a lot of people going to broadcast, but used to be a lot of former athletes went into, into insurance and car sales because it was... Something they could use their notoriety for. Thank you. Right. Um, I don't know. Purple Rain. Um, I don't see. You, you need to unmute yourself. Ooh, so. Uh, Noah. So here's the thing, guys. High value men. I said it before and I said it again. High value According to the world, understand something. The world looks at men of a higher value to make distinctions. Now, internally amongst the dialogue we have over here, we know high value is a mindset. But when the world looks at it, the world looks at it and says, you have to have a certain amount of you have you have to have a certain amount of resources, network, and everything else. See. One of the things you guys are getting a lot on YouTube is a lot of information, but you need direction and focus. This is what coaching does. See, many of you will go to college and spend 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 thousand dollars in student loan debt, but you won't spend the additional ten thousand dollars to get a coach to actually point you in the right direction to where you can maximize your outcomes. Spending sixty thousand dollars to become average. Versus spending $70,000 to become a, above average or excellence. Which path would you take? The difference is for the $60,000, they give you a piece of paper to hang on your wall. You can say, I got this. The additional $10,000 over a 12-month period, you get nothing except one-to-one -one, one -one program. You don't walk away with this, but you walk away with something much more. That is why successful men tend to have the same stories. Uh, we'll go for another 15 or so minutes. Uh, guys, I'm going to, uh, shoot AMS something over or I'm going to donate something. Yeah. I believe in compensating people for being on my channel. So, uh, if you guys hear the thing, if guys, if you like having people like that on the channel, do me a favor. Uh, Give me a thumbs up in the chat room or throw throw in one emoji because I, I mean, I'm willing to have people on the on the platform. And another thing. There are going to be people that come on the platform that may have conflicting views. If you are a high value competitive man and you cannot deal with somebody real time who has an opposing view, you're not really you're not ready. You're not ready for prime time. You should be able to know what it is you stand on, why you stand on it. And even if you are separated by that person, 90% of the things, find the 10% of the thing you can work on and do that. Stop worrying about liking everybody and do business. 
Become friends later. First comes the money. Okay, cool. Um, we're gonna unmute you. Hello, four three four. Hello. First name. First name. Okay, I'm going to mute you because you're not ready. Uh, okay. First name. Caller. Yes, sir. Kevin, my first name is Akeem. Hey, Akeem, how are you? I'm doing well, sir. Thanks for having me tonight. How are you? No problem. What do you have for me? Uh, yes, sir. Actually, uh, just a question here. I work in sales currently and um, <clears throat> making pretty good income at this present time. Uh, like right now, commissions. Um, I'm at about $6,000 in commissions right now. But with the KPIs that are in place with the company. Key performance uh, indicators. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, just curious, if I hit these extra uh, KPIs that are in place, that'll put me around an eight, nine thousand dollar mark, possibly more. Okay. So I was just curious on, like, do you have like any specific, uh, like, books or? Okay. Uh, uh, are you, are you talking about six thousand dollars annually? I mean, a month or is it, what? Are you no, a month, right? Just strictly in commissions. Before, okay. So basically, like, if months. you if you hit, you're making six thousand a month, so seventy two thousand a year. And if you hit the KPIs, you can increase your, your income by 25%, which is the additional 2000 which is $24,000 a year, right? That's the, yes, that's, actually, that's the delta. I can increase it 30%, 30 yes. 30%. If I reach the top. All right. Level, yes. So, and you're asking, do I have any, any books to read to help well, you? Well, like, you, you have, like, a suggestion. Coaching. On, like, how to increase my coaching. skill sets. Coaching. Um, coaching. Coaching. It's always going to be coaching. See, books is something you do after you get the core knowledge. Have, have you ever played any sports? Yes. What did you play? I played football. Okay. Reading a book on football and lacing them up are two different things. Right. You can't read about how success you got. Black men, we have to get to the point to where we pay for knowledge. Sales. Sales coaching. And then uh, I say everybody, I started out with this coaching thing in my sales career my first year. Everybody was making the same amount of money. I made my $35,000 and everybody else went and tricked theirs off. I took five grand and went and got additional coaching and I doubled my income. I mean, almost, I mean, increased my income by 50%. There are no books because if I started to dig further, I, I can almost guarantee that you don't really have a, most people, I'm not going to say you, most people are in sales, but they don't have an underlying sales philosophy. Dale Carnegie, Zig Ziglar, DEI, Sandler, the ledge, some sort of sales system. Most companies just put people in it, give you two or three days worth of training, and you're out here just in water wings trying to make it. Being a professional salesperson is a transferable skill that you can use between products or services or even on your own as a contract salesperson to work for people to make additional money. That comes from one-on-one -on -one coaching. You need to learn what it means to be a salesperson what your sales philosophy is, and then the system. But I will give you a book. Every salesperson should read a book called The Challenger Sale. The Challenger Sale was uh, made created by Salesforce.com. And it says that there's one type of salesperson that succeeds in bull or bear markets over our uh, over last hundred years, and it's The Challenger. But you don't get to become a challenger salesperson just because you have the gift of gab and great personality. At the end of the day, the challenger is a great book, but you're going to need sales training and a coach. Got it? Okay. Thank yes, you. Yes, sir. Bye. Thank you. Hey, guys, Bye. understand something. Uh, other, other men of other <laughs> non-black men beat us all the time because they'll pay for coaching. They'll pay to talk. They'll pay to learn. We want to... It's our culture to want to, because we have such a, uh, how do I want to say this? Because we have such an informal way of doing things. We don't like paying for non-tangibles. We want to pay for stuff. 
We don't want to pay for somebody to talk. We think someone talking should come for free. And no, it doesn't. That's the that's the most expensive thing you should get to pay for. I actually had somebody reach out to me and ask me to speak to a group of 15 professionals or 20 professionals uh, for an hour and field questions. I get these requests all the time. Well, I'm a corporate image consultant. I have a corporate hourly rate. I have a speaking, I have a group speaking rate. Um, and you don't do these things for free. You bill them at your a la carte hourly rate. And if someone asks you to speak in front of the group, they're going to ask, they, you don't know what you're going to ask. They should pay you for your time. You should be compensated well. Uh, Les Brown, motivational speaker. If you're not, he's making, as a per, as a, per, let me say it this way. I started out doing, I did my first uh, public speaking engagement at, at Langston. I did it pro bono. The next one I did at you know, Oklahoma State University was $1,000. But it was an actual presentation for an hour, $1,500 at all these colleges. So when I go to speak to a company, I'm either going to get a definite benefit or they're paying me to come in and coach and train. Yeah, there's a lot of money to be made in this stuff, man. But you got to pay for it. Uh, yeah, and if if you want me to speak to your group, uh, you got to pay me my hourly rate. It's not negotiable. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do it for a discount because it's a good cause. No. You go out and get the money required to pay for the information you want because you would not expect somebody to come in and just say, well, you know what? I'm getting paid less, so let me come up here in a t-shirt, shorts, eating a Chick-fil-A biscuit. No, you expect excellence, pay for it. Hello, Khadijah. Hello. Hi, Mr. Kevin. Hey, how are you? Are Good. you are you living single? Uh, I mean, living. unfortunately, I am now. Remember Khadijah on living yeah. single? It's new. <laughs> What's up? What's, what's good? Okay, so I hear you talking a lot about business, right? So, and you're giving a lot of good business advice. So here's my business question. Okay. I have been the type of person, very ambitious, have been trying to start a business for 10 years now, literally. So the only thing I've ever known I wanted to do was teach. So we're 10 years later. I am a very specific type of software engineer that's like hard to find as a skill. And I'm a great teacher. So, and that's the, the good part I have. And the bad part I have is like, I'm unfocused. I, I literally spent over like 40 grand on different coaches trying to figure it out. Uh, well, um, let me stop you right here. Yeah. Let me stop you right I'm here. I'm one of those. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let me okay. stop, 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 stop. How old are you? Uh, 29. I'm going to be 29 in October. Um, if I wanted to get what you are good at teaching, what would I search on Google? Um, DevOps engineer. DevOps. Dev DevOps. D E V O P S. D. Uh huh. Yeah, on my computer. D E V O V D E V O. Uh huh. O P S. O P S. De yeah, DevOps. Mm hmm. IBM DevOps. Okay. Then let me go ahead. Um. Um. Consultant. Okay. Uh, hire DevOps engineers. Is that is that okay? Um, yeah, it's like oh, yeah. Accenture. Well, first off, uh, the first thing I'm going to say is, where's your man? Because men are good. You know, Hold on, listen. Don't, I don't need you to respond to this. Men are good okay. for this. Men are good mm -hmm. for structure. Women are good for the creativity. Men are good for the structure part. You don't have it, you're gonna to have to buy it. And it's in coaching and consulting. What, you, what you're trying to learn how to become is a consultant. Okay. A consultant is a teaching salesperson. Is that what you wanna do? Um, I know that the, the bigger, my passion is in the teaching part of it is, and none of the business side. Oh, but, but, but you're skilled, okay, but you gotta get paid for it. Yeah, okay. So you said teaching. It's a teaching person? salesperson. You have to sell someone on the fact that you can teach them how to do what they need to get done. Mm -hmm. It's a consultant. It's a skill. 
You may be very good at what you do, but if you can't get someone to hire you to do it and pay, then it doesn't matter. You need to, that's why the consultant part, do you work for a company or do you do this freelance? I, do, I am a consultant for like the government. Oh yeah. I work for companies. Yeah. But, but you probably get, how'd you get that job? A recruiter or something? Yeah. From LinkedIn. Okay. Great. So, but if you were to open your own DevOps consulting yeah. firm, you'd have to go out and land your own contracts. Yeah. You make more money because right now, uh, the firm you're working for is the pimp. Mm -hmm. You own the stroll. So if you want to become the madam, you got to learn how to go get the clients. Okay. And that's a skill. So you wasted forty thousand dollars on what? All kinds of coaches. Uh, because then I was unfocused too, because I had like twenty five different businesses I needed to do, and I needed to do all of them at the same time. Why? And I was thinking, well, uh, see, you need a, you I need always... a you need a life coach. Yeah. Okay. You need a life coach. Um, now I am leery about taking on women as clients. Um, because you're notoriously difficult. Okay. You're notoriously okay. difficult. I, I will still do it, but it's only after, after hammering out an, an expectation. Uh, and I, of course, everything I do is be a retainer in legal contracts. Mm -hmm. Um, because if you have a skill that's valuable and I can see that people are searching for it, yeah. there's a, you should be using it to your own benefit, but there are many things that are going on here. You need someone to help you focus on your life mm -hmm. and also help you talk about how to prepare your business. Those are different tracks and, it, and to find a coach that does both of those. Well, uh, it is, uh, is a unique ask. Send me an email. We can sit down so for an hour. Uh, you can send me an email and uh, I have a line that's called career. Uh, I have a, you can book your one-on-one -on -one career coaching advice and I can give you my opinion uh, mm -hmm. ab about your more specific situation and see what direction I can point you in. Because there are going to be plenty of people out here who, who are going to, you know, offer some sort of sale, some sort of service, but I'm sensing that there may be several tracks uh, necessary. Um, so send me an email or actually just go book your career co coaching advice and we'll kind of go from there. Where can I book it? Uh, on my website, bykevinsamuels.com. Go under, uh, there's a link in the description. Um, mm -hmm. at the end of the, yeah, bykevinsamuels.com, go under the products tab, career, yep, corporate here. coaching, uh -huh. uh, or even better go to the scheduling tab and just pick career mm -hmm. corporate coaching. And then you'll be directed to uh, a calendar uh, to secure okay, your Okay, I have it. Okay, thank you, Khadija. Thank, thank All you. Right. All right, guys, understand something. Um, I, I've said it once and I'll say it again. Sales is one of the things I, I am so passionate about black men becoming better at. It throw it, it, it is a way for many black men to get into the core of the economy in a capitalistic society become integral parts and players either in corporate America and still have the ability to leave and make your own money. If you are a, a, an above average salesperson, you can sell widgets or this or whatever, whatever the product is, or you can find somebody to run the systems. The person who gets the contract signed, brings the money through the door is the most important person to a small business. If that's you, you got something. Back to what Alpha Male Strategies was talking about, he was able to be as successful as he is because of his extensive sales background, even as a transferable skill from being a personal trainer, because that's that's very competitive. If you've ever been to a gym, personal trainers have to compete. For everyone that comes through the door, they're not giving anything. Um, last two, and we're out of here. Purple Rain, you need to unmute. Hello. Hey, what's going on, Kev? You can hear me? Uh, yeah. Your, your first name is? My name is Malik Greaves. I'm out of Jacksonville, Florida. I'm a 25-year-old black male. Yes, sir. Okay, what do you have for me? I got onto your channel a couple of days ago and I wanted to just say, you know, I'm proud of you, everything and all the work that you're doing. Um, two points that stood out to me today. Um, most people that came in, they asked you, hey, what can I do to do this? Um, 
it's I th- I wanted to bring up a point. What would you give up to get where you want to get, right? What would you sacrifice? Sacrifice is a big thing. They it, uh most people focus sounds like, oh, they're not focused on, you know, the goal at hand. They're doing other they're saying, I got all these other things going on, but it's like, okay, what addiction do you have in your personal life internally that you can get rid of that's keeping you from the clear path to your purpose or the goal that you say that you want. So sacrifice is one thing. And then two, uh, th- one quick point, it's not going to be as long. Um, the second point that came up was talking about just being a man in general about certain things. And what men need to understand is what is a man's nature, whether it be a relationship, a job, whatever it is, your job is to moderate, keep calm, keep peace and construct. You're not destructive, you're not wild, you're disciplined, and everywhere you go, you look to construct and not destruct. And those are the two points I just wanted to bring up, and hopefully you can expand on those for the rest of the people in the chat. Uh, uh, okay. So what are you doing in your uh, in your day-to-day life? You said me? Yes. Um. Well, recently... What's your, what's your profession? Last- what's your profession? <laughs> My profession right now, I do logistics, and right now, literally in the last two days, I'm basically at the beginning of starting my first endeavor that I'm going to pursue, you know, to an end to kind of get me into my next step. Before okay. these two days, I was already, I was the type of person that was scattered because of my habits mm-hmm. that I had in my private life. Definitely. I decided to cut those habits literally in the last three days. Okay. Because my judgment was so clouded and my energy was. So once I sacrificed, just it took me three days to sacrifice my habits, right? Okay, uh, I, 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 I got to get to the next. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I got to get to the next point. I just wanted a short answer. But well, appreciate it. I will oh, expand sorry, on it. No, pro- no problem. Thank you. Yeah, those are some good things to put in. Um, but I will say this, young men, your youth and exuberance. What you tend to lack is focus. This is why one of the things that hurt the black community so much, lack of fathers, so many, so many black men have an issue with authority, black male authority. You tend to go through life making your own mistakes, not having a coach, a teacher, a father figure. And this is why coaching is so critical, especially in the black community, because we grew up without direction. Consistency, structure, discipline are the three things that tend to be the biggest impediment to success for men. Um, See, knowing what to do and having the will to do it are two different things. Uh, Mars, Mark, Mars, how do I pronounce your name? Uh, It's Mark Seen. Can you hear me? Mark Seen? Yes. Uh, Hi, Mark. How old are you? I'm 32. Uh, Okay. What do you have for me? So uh, I'm calling to, uh, first off, thank you for having me on your platform. Um, I was listening to your show and a while back you uh, mentioned that, you know, for men to get out of their comfort zone and part of that was moving to a newer city. Uh, so I know you used to live in Houston for a while as well. And I actually plan on moving to Austin, Texas by the end of the year. And I just wanted to get your thoughts on, you know, what are your thoughts on Austin, Texas and kind of what it's a great city it's the silicon for. valley of the, what do you do for what's your profession um i actually just finished a program a boot camp in uh coding and uh software engineering okay so, so here's the thing to get started out there austin is a silicon valley of the south you have all the advantages of of um you have some, not all the advantages. you have similar advantages as you do at the west coast with a texas living you don't have you don't have state tax i would move to austin if I were to, if I did not move to Atlanta, Austin was on my on my map. Austin, mm. uh, Atlanta, um, New York City, and if I Charlotte was a possibility, it was a lesser possibility than Austin, uh, and, and then in London. But I decided on Atlanta. Austin is a great, especially if you're under forty, uh, because it has the University of Texas there. It's the state capital, so it gets all the resources. Yeah. Uh, but I would say plug in heavily into the the neighborhood machinery, the local political machinery, all the resources. Don't just get focused on work and hard skills. It's the soft skills that make men uh, that that are the X factor for men. 
Every position okay. you do, there are hundreds, there are 50 or 100 applicants. That means everyone had the hard skills. It's the X factor, the soft skills. Got it? I got you. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Appreciate your time, brother. Bye-bye. Take care. All right, guys. We're going to wrap this up. Uh, we're about to get on midnight. I'm trying to keep these shows to two hours. To two hours. To two hours. To two hours. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. Um, tomorrow night show promises to be a humdinger. I'm not going to even tell you the title. But uh, we got to get to, you know, we got to touch back on we, 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 ladies. I said it yesterday. The way you look tells men of your society what you think they deserve. And here's the other part. Your children, single mother, not single mothers, un, unmarried mothers, i.e. baby mamas. We need to talk about So many want men who are high value. And my question is, what should a baby mama have to do to get a high value husband? See, a lot of people talk about you push marriage. I don't push marriage. I push marrying well for high value. Again, the uh, the overall question that I keep that I asked is rich and wealthy non-black men marry, divorce and remarry in this current environment. What do those rich and wealthy men who marry, divorce and remarry before and or after they have attained their status? See, they're still doing it. They're rich and wealthy either before or after and they still do it. What do they know and understand that single middle class black folks don't understand about marriage? And see, I, I directed it at the men initially because we have been traditionally told that men avoid marriage. But see, what the real problem is black women. Do you understand what marriage is or why it's for? Because if you listen, even the women who've been married divorce their husbands and they divorce them with children. So what do you think you should have to do to get a high value husband? We're going to talk about it. Please do a video on high value women, a hundred thousand dollars. They need to love to, uh, Okay, do a video. Okay. See, that, that video is, let me tell you why I won't do that video or something like that. Because it is so narrow. 6% of women earn over $100,000. 6%. Doing a video for 6% of 51% of the population. The population in this country is called 350 million. So half of that is 175 million. 6% of 175 million. 175. 6%. You're asking me to do a video. Uh-uh. 175 million people and you're asking me to do a video for roughly 10.5 million women and that's assuming those and th and that's just the number half of those women are married now black women if you adjust this by relative population size white people are 13% of the population that's 1.3 million black women, roughly. And then if you adjust that number, again, 
for the wetlock rate. You're asking me to make a video for just over a million women. That's an incredibly small target. If you make that kind of money, you know what you need more than anything else? You need to know why your career success has not translated over into romantic success. Let's do that. Um, let's talk about it. And why has your career why has your career success? Career success does not translate into relationship success, people. Let me go ahead and type this into you. Career success does not equal relationship success. Those are two different skills. Does not equal relationship. See, the problem is many of you career women, you have horrible relationship skills. You spend so much time trying to get a career and you have not put, and then you think about, and then you think you can just decide to get a man. You haven't planned for him. To the, to the person who did the super chat, I would almost guarantee that you have invested little to nothing as far as dollars into learning what you need to do to get a man. You've invested in your education. You've invested in your career. Far women, you spend more time, you spend more thought, you, you pick your hairstylist with more care. So, it's not as though you need love it's the fact that you have not adequately prepared yourself for relationships. And worse than that, at $120,000 a year, women, black women, want you to be making at least what they're making, plus 50%. So the only way the average man would make you happy, man, is he'd have to be making near $200,000 a year. And why would a man that's making $200,000 a year want you? That's the real question. Don't leave. I mean, seriously. What should you have to do to get a man? I'm willing to have the conversation. Next week, um, I will have uh, Crystal and Carison of the Pink Pill on. She'll be on next Wednesday. Um, it's time we have some conversations. And far too often, women have thought that men should come standard and you're not, you're not ruthlessly going after a mate. Right. You're not ruthlessly going after a mate. So, um, high value men are in high demand. Uh, Understand something. Let me say this. Yes, pink pill. Yep. Yep. Here's the thing. Let me say something to all the guys who don't seem to understand this. If you're, if you cannot stand up to opposition, what does it say about you? I don't fear the stuff that you guys fear. That, I mean, it doesn't bother me. You know what I look at things like this? I look at, I look at times like this to show how good you really, you should look at times like this to really shine. See, if you're a fighter, if you're a fighter, 
You don't fear the ring. You want to get in the fight. You want to prove to the world and yourself that you belong here. So if, if we're all these things you say you are, high value black men and a modern, you know, progressive black men and thinking black men and all those other kind of things. Well, shit, it's time to show the work. You're going to have to get out there and compete against Brad, Lee, Ahmed, and Enrique. It's time to compete. And see, I'm ready to compete. True competitors love the race. Allen Iverson, it's just practice. He wanted to get in the game. Usain Bolt. He lit up when it was time to run. So when I hear you guys talk about know this, know that, understand something. I think that's weak. I think it's very weak. It is a time to shine. Not only is she going to be on here, all the uh, people who have been blocked from the swirl side are going to be unblocked for the broadcast. Oh, hell yeah. I am not afraid. I plan on winning. Because there is some common ground for everything. Why are you? Now, remember who you're talking to. I am still who I say I am. I am who I am me. I saw somebody, somebody actually sent me a paper. Somebody actually sent a cash app the other day. And I'm going to call you out. His name was Star Scream, something about a transformer. He sent $5 in as a PayPal. You know what he did? Not a PayPal, as a cash app. He sent $5 in to lob an insult at me. Crystal and Carison came in and you kissed the ring. This black man sent $5 in on the cash app. And then he deleted it. I need you to understand something. A black man sent in $5 to insult me and then deleted it. Sir, you are weaker than water. That is weak. Crystal and Carison and women like her own space in your head and your heart. And they made you act in a pathetic way. I mean, think about what I just said. Made you act in a pathetic way. Guaranteed. He does not physically know this woman, probably never had any actual interactions with her, but has such animus that he decided to come over here and watch my show. I want to see it. Since you decided to cancel it, let's just go ahead and make you famous. Karazin came in and you kissed the ring. <laughs> now, well, let me not be so hard on. Let me, let me back this up. I don't like the fact that you can have an opinion. But gentlemen, you win through your words, never through an argument. If your position cannot withstand vigorous debate then you need a better position how many of you guys see the average person would do well studying anthropology and philosophy and debate if your point is so weak to where you can't withstand some questioning and and here's the thing for for people who are worried about this is space is becoming this and that. Do you really want to help men? If you say you want to do what you say it is you want to do, then eventually it's going to have to leave this little space and go wider. 
There's an entire world out there of men who have never heard these messages. Entire world of women who are thinking they're crazy. How do we talk to the entire world if we stay in our corner? Someone has to go out and say something. And what are you going to do? Are you going to support the person that is willing to go out there and represent? Are you going to stab them in the back? What does that look like? You have such a solid position. Your knowledge is so great. You got such a standard and this and that to where even when someone's going to go over there and speak on your behalf, advocate for you, you stab them in the back. What does that look like to your opposition? They're like, you ain't got to worry about defeating them. They'll kill each other. I'm sorry, man. I won't do it for you. Nope. I won't do it for you. Um, let me say this and I'll be wrap up. Singularly competitive men don't have to fear anything except complacency. I will tell you this. In my career, I have been the token black man. I didn't like it. But every place I've gone, I have fought to become the top, at least in the top 10%. I wanted the people I work with know that if you come up against me, I am going to kick your fucking ass. And even go share a beer. I wanted people to want to be on my team versus competing against me. See, that steel sharpened steel is a warrior spirit. You're supposed to want the, the smoke, the fight. When I was a white belt, I used to love to fight green belts and blue belts. I didn't want to fight people at my level. I wanted to fight people that were above me. And I got my ass whooped a lot. But I also, it, I actually it exponentially increased. You only get better by the fight. To the point to where when you are comp, when you are singularly competitive, you are a benefit to yourself and anyone you're around. You don't have to beat everybody up. You don't have to wear it on your chest. It's a completely different energy. I tell you, man, it's nothing like being a brother. Walking into a place where you're the only speck of pepper in a sea of salt. And everybody wants to know who you are. Not because you look good in the suit, but because there's something about you. Again, high value men don't care whether you lose the weight for them. A la Buddha, the Christmas fairy, they just care that you look, that you're fit. Whatever your motivation is, can you win? I want more men to be able to win at whatever they choose to want to do. So let's say I have friends who have married out. We've had some knockdown, drag out conversations. White friends, if you think, deal with some people from uh, India or like Saudi or Pakistan. I'll tell you, there's some different views out there, different cultures. And we can't, and you can't be right on everything. But at the end of the day, you should be able to stand your ground and make a, a defense. And you win where you can win. Respect is what I demand from my adversary. Yeah, if you don't give it, I'll take it from you. That's what I demand from my adversary. Love, admiration, liking, all that stuff comes later. I just want your respect. I can find, I can get my love elsewhere. All right, people. It's late. I got things to do. It's been a day. 
Thank you again, Alpha Male Strategies. We didn't do the Money World song today. Well, we did, but we didn't have time for it. Oh, y'all want to see the Money World clip? Uh, shout out Tierra. She, Tierra actually threw the Money World. The Money World clip is going to be cool tomorrow. I ain't going to wait wait tonight. But All right, guys. We're going to get out of here. I'm tired. Money World. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> Peace. We're gone. My car is in the shop. Sad. Becky needs a little work. Join me on Patreon for videos you will only see there. Monday, 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. Patreon live stream. What? Somebody call me some Join me on IG for videos you will only see in the frat room. When they're up, they're up. When they're gone, they're gone. IG is going to become such an integral part of the channel. Gotta love it, gotta love it, gotta love it. Email me at info at buykevinsamuels.com Set up your, your show ideas things like that or if you want to book your one-on-one -on -one console go to buykevinsamuels.com for your personal advice career advice and a personal communication or even better your virtual consultation if you're a video editor i'm looking for a full-time editor the way you do it is you send me a mock-up of what you would do with one of my videos I'm looking for somebody to edit my full-time fashion and fragrance videos four to five of those seven to twelve minutes each i'll send you the raw file and then somebody that actually take excerpts from the trailers from the live stream two to three trailers maybe a best of a compilation let's see what you can do strike my inbox Play nice, everybody. So tell you good, good night. Strange. We're going to shut this down the other way. Good night.